I really need to talk about Shane Dawson. Anyone who is familiar with my channel will know that I tend to talk about parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships. Remember to subscribe, hit that like to give me a dopamine hit. As a content creator, I find it really interesting to talk about the creator-fan dynamic because I just have a tendency to like things that are a little bit, um, meta. I'm going to get into what exactly a parasocial relationship is later in the video. I recently watched a video from D'Angelo Wallace about Shane Dawson, and if you don't know what's happening with Shane Dawson, I really do recommend going to see that video. It really addresses every aspect of what the fuck is going on. In this video, I'm going to be specifically focusing on the child grooming, paedophilia aspect of this whole thing. I'm going to be analysing what the fuck happened through the lens of parasocial relationships. D'Angelo Wallace was extremely careful in his video to express that what was happening was problematic and it could not be argued that it wasn't because there were literal children in some of these situations. And while I absolutely agree that this behaviour is unacceptable and it's not something that we should tolerate on platforms such as YouTube or just generally ever, in this video I'm going to demonstrate that we do not need to be specifically looking for examples of Shane interacting with literal children in real time, in real life, to explain how fucked up his behaviour was. And that's why I'm going to be approaching this from the lens of what I call parasocial grooming. We're also going to be investigating the Shane Dawson subreddit. I do believe that it's really important to highlight these experiences from former fans that consumed Shane's content as kids. We need to become better at spotting the warning signs when it comes to people like Shane or Onision. I do want to highlight some of the similarities that I have noticed in their content that I think are really important to critically analyse and think about when it comes to people on platforms such as YouTube. Both of these channels were not really family friendly, but they were also immature enough to appeal to children. They took pride in being politically incorrect, edgy yet childish jokes that often were quite sexual, dick jokes, boob jokes, vagina jokes, content that was specifically aimed at young kids or teens. And I know that some people will say, oh no, but Shane didn't know that his content was consumed by so many kids. And that is just an outright lie. Shane has always known that there were hordes of specifically young girls that were fans of him and he would know this because of meet and greets the not cool movie was specifically marketed as a teen movie he knew that children were consuming his content not only did he know this but i would argue that he deliberately played on this and this was the specific audience that he wanted at the time compared to other youtubers at the time like for example dan and phil or even jenna marbles Onision and Shane were quite unique in their extreme edginess. They were kind of like these edgy rebels of YouTube. So think about this for a second. How many kids have you known that wanted to feel grown up and didn't want to be considered as children? I've known quite a few and I, I know one that's that's right here because I, I was like that as a kid. I was one of those kids that was really fucking fed up of being treated like a kid. And this kind of content, Onision and Shane, specifically appealed to this kind of child that wanted to grow up, that didn't want to be considered as lesser than an adult. Other resemblances between the two are the aesthetic that they used, emo, edgy boy aesthetic that was extremely, extremely popular with teenage girls at the time. And there was also, you know, the, the actual content of the videos that they were making. Both of them were really into rating teens' bodies as adults. Both of them were receiving pictures from teenagers. Both of them were sexualizing these pictures publicly in their videos. Those are the resemblances that I have seen, personally. Like, if you've seen any others, then please do let me know in the comments because I'm seriously interested in this kind of pattern of behaviour and calling it out because I'm, I'm me. <laughs> As I've said before, although there are some really fucking awful, awful, awful videos of Shane that have surfaced of him directly interacting with children, I'm specifically going to be focusing on the parasocial audience creator dynamic that Shane managed to create. 
I've decided to call this parasocial audience grooming. This isn't actually a term that exists, I've just made it up, and I made it up by basically sticking three words together to express something that I think is important to talk about, so let's talk about that. I don't mean targeted internet grooming. Targeted internet grooming is what I would describe as an adult going after a specific child online, maybe pretending to be younger than they are in order to gain that child's trust, but it's a very individual kind of thing, and it's not really so much parasocial because there is a two-way communication line between the groomer and the child being groomed. So a good example of this kind of grooming would be the video of Shane uh, sexualizing that, that kid on Omegle, asking her to twerk, or Shane kissing a 12-year-old at a meet and greet. Um, Parasocial audience grooming describes the grooming of an entire audience or an entire category of your audience. So specifically children, young, impressionable, insecure kids, and especially girls. So I'm gonna start by reading a quote that describes what exactly a parasocial relationship is. One of the striking characteristics of the new mass media is that they give the illusion of a face-to-face -face relationship with the performer. The persona offers, above all, a continuing relationship something that is a regular and dependable event to be counted on, planned for, and integrated into the daily routines of life. It's a relationship where the technical devices of the media themselves are exploited to create illusions of intimacy. To make this a little bit meta, this is literally what's happening between me and you at this current time. I'm looking at the camera and you feel like I'm looking at you, and there is a one-way dynamic here. I can't see you reacting to what I'm saying, but you're watching me as if I was in the same room as you. A parasocial relationship in Shane Dawson's case is a one-way relationship that goes from Shane to Shane's audience. It is still a relationship, it's just not a traditional relationship in the way that we know them in our day-to-day -day lives. The line of communication in this kind of relationship goes directly from the content creator to the audience. So what I'm calling parasocial audience grooming here means that there was no direct communication between the children watching Shane's content and Shane, but there was direct communication between Shane and the children. It's just a one-way thing. However, because Shane was the one making this highly sexualized content directly targeting kids, the effects of this on these children are really similar to the effects that we would see in individual grooming. It's really important to remember that there is still a relationship between the content creator and the person watching, even if it's only one way. And I would argue that when it comes to child grooming, you only need that relationship to be one way to groom a child. You don't need the child to answer. It's actually probably even better for the person grooming if the child doesn't even have a say in what's happening. The reason that I've included audience in the term parasocial audience grooming is because Shane wasn't simply making this content for one child. How many thousands of kids have watched Shane's videos? Hundreds of thousands. Shane Dawson has been one of the biggest content creators on YouTube for years, and although it's technically impossible to know how many children were affected by this highly sexualized content, this is really fucking worrying. And when you think about this, when you think about this one-way parasocial grooming relationship that has possibly affected thousands and thousands of children, this is something that we need to talk about and that we need to think about as not only YouTubers, but as a society. These parasocial relationships are now a huge part of day-to-day -day life, even for kids. We need to be seriously considering what is considered child grooming. Does child grooming have to specifically target one child at a time to be considered child grooming? Thanks to YouTube, child groomers now have the possibility to potentially groom hundreds of thousands of kids we can look at the general definition of regular child grooming and see if this also applies to what Shane Dawson was doing to his audience at the time. To establish a good relationship with a child and the child's family, child groomers might do several things. They might try and gain the child's or parent's trust by befriending them. Child groomers might look for opportunities to have time alone with the child, which can be done by, for example, offering to babysit. Commonly, they show pornography to the child, or talk about sexual topics with the child, or show them sexualized pictures, hoping to make it easier and easier for the child to accept these behaviors and thus normalizing them. They may also engage with hugging, kissing, or other physical contact, even when the child doesn't want it. It's easy to see how this could also apply to content creators, right? 
gaining trust by befriending them, even if it is through a parasocial dynamic on YouTube, easy access to the child alone via YouTube. Time alone with the child is very easy for someone on YouTube to get because, you know, how could it be that bad? It's just a video on YouTube, right? And the sexualized aspect, Shane Dawson normalized sexualizing his parasocial dynamic with his child audience through his videos. I also found the different stages of grooming online. It starts by targeting the victims, gaining their trust, then filling a need, then isolating the child, sexual contact, and then maintaining control. All of these things could be applied to Shane Dawson's content. When it comes to targeting, perpetrators may target and exploit a child's perceived vulnerabilities, emotional neediness, isolation, uh, neglect, chaotic home life, a lack of parental oversight. Once that's occurred, the creator then starts fulfilling the need. They become more and more important in this child's life, and flattery is described as one of the very basic tactics that child groomers use. Shane Dawson has done this quite a lot, and Onision has too, in the videos where they would rate underage fans that sent them pictures in videos, often sexualizing these pictures as they were rating them. And then the next stage, isolating the child, the perpetrator may reinforce the relationship with the child by cultivating a sense that they love and understand the child in a way that others, even their parents, could not. Both Shane and Onision have done this, with an entire part of their audience, talking about their own vulnerabilities when it came to weight or what they looked like and stuff like that. Oh, Onision understands me. Shane understands me. The next step is sexualizing the relationship. So once this emotional dependence and trust has, has been built, progressively the relationship becomes more and more sexual. This occurs through talking, pictures and conversation topics. The adult exploits the child's natural curiosity and trust using stimulation to advance the sexual nature of the relationship. They weren't just constantly putting out obviously horrendous stuff. Although there was a lot of awful stuff there, there were also a lot of times where the child would be watching their content and just be, you know, hanging out with them parasocially and building this dynamic which then allowed these creators to introduce more and more sexualized content into the children's lives. Because parasocial relationships are one-sided and cannot be developed mutually, very nearly the whole burden of this relationship is thrown onto the persona and on the show of which he is the pivot. The performer should be loved and admired. Every attempt possible is made to strengthen the illusion of reciprocity. There is an emphasis on the ideal performer having heart and being sincere, with a performance that's real and warm. This is a post from the Shane Dawson subreddit. When I found Shane, I was eight or nine years old. I grew up in a pretty stable family with parents who made me feel safe, if not a little invalidated at times, but that's been addressed later in life. I'm now 20 years old. I remember those creepy vlogs with his cousins and his racist jokes and the Millie stuff. I remember seeing it and thinking it was funny and shocking and that's what made people laugh. I would go to school and make Shane Dawson jokes and my friends would be upset by it after a while because they were vile jokes. But I was a nine-year-old girl who felt special because I could watch these adult videos and I wanted to feel shocking and edgy like Shane. That was enough to make me wish Shane hadn't come into my life giving me tools to ostracize myself for a quick laugh, leaving me extremely isolated from my peers. I shouldn't have known what a blowjob was when I was eight. When I got to the age of 11 or 12, I wanted to find a boyfriend. My high school life became pretty lonely and I was struggling to find common interests with people my age. So I went online and found a YouTube and Twitch streamer who I liked watching a lot. Through him, I met a man in his early 20s in California. He had about 300 subscribers, but that was enough for me. For years we would Skype, and I don't want to get into what would happen in the calls. But I remember feeling so loved and special. Looking back on it, I remember seeing myself as those girls Shane would kiss at conventions and his little cousin who got attention. All I'm trying to say is that I'm struggling to cope with the concept of parasocial grooming. I feel like if it hadn't have felt it was so funny and exciting to be sexualized by mature men, I wouldn't have ever thought of an older man that way. I feel like watching Shane made it acceptable to open myself up to men like him and it made the red flags feel funny and exciting. In hindsight, I remember knowing it was wrong, hiding Shane's videos from my parents, making racist nasty jokes to friends and being immediately shut down and shut out. 
Then, reaching out online, I'm finding men like Shane, who said what I wanted and made me feel like a grown-up. I watched Shane as a kid, and I feel like if I hadn't, I wouldn't have been manipulated and abused in my teen years by older men online. This is not the only post like this. There are absolutely tons of people coming out now with similar stories to this person. The parasocial connection that they had with Shane had extremely similar effects to grooming. Think about how child grooming has evolved and now it's not just people pretending to be 16 in chat rooms to target specific individual children. I think that what Shane Dawson has done in my Individual opinion, audience grooming, parasocial audience grooming. I think the effects that he's potentially had on thousands and thousands and thousands of children, when you really think about it, when you sit and think of it, it is horrific. It is horrific. And anyone who's talking about a Shane redemption arc, consider everything I've talked about in this video. Consider D'Angelo Wallace's video. I think that Shane should retire from the internet. If he doesn't do it by himself, then we should pressure him to retire from the internet. When I say retire from the internet, I mean that Shane Dawson's channel should go. All of his videos should go. He should no longer be able to make money online as an internet personality. It's over. Take your fucking money and leave. You've done so much damage, so much damage, that any comeback, no matter how sincere it sounds, is not going to be enough. I would encourage anyone who watched Shane's content as a kid, talk about your stories. I am absolutely persuaded that there are thousands of people with extremely similar stories to this person on Reddit who have watched Shane's content. Through watching his content and through being parasocially groomed by Shane Dawson, had to go through life with the effects of grooming. And potentially it normalized this idea of, you know, huge age gaps and paedophilia. Shane Dawson normalized paedophilia to kids for years. That's all I have to say, to be honest. That's all I have to say. I'm a YouTube celebrity I live through your smartphone screen Buy all my stuff and please love me Remember, I love you About the blackface and the n-word It wasn't about race, and I know that sounds absurd uh, um, yeah I know I've spent years sexualizing children that, that sounds bad And making money using racist jokes I was in such a dark place I didn't know better back then I promise, I promise I've, I've changed. changed I was in my twenties It was a different time I had a lot of anxiety I was bullied as a child So, so please, please forget about me Please forget something like I'll say I don't know who that person was I'm rebranding to sell you more stuff Sell you more stuff Just to sell you more. Reinvent myself constantly So you can buy more stuff from me Reinvent myself constantly Reinvent myself constantly Buy more stuff from me Buy more stuff from me Come buy more stuff from me You can buy more stuff from me Reinvent myself constantly So you can buy more stuff from me Reinvent myself constantly Constantly Reinvent myself constantly Buy more stuff Buy more Buy more stuff from me Buy more stuff Special thank you to Mountain Snow, Reasonably Agitated Honeybee, Erica Abenti, Lunos Nocturne, Moira,